Welcome back everybody to another episode of WTDU. In today's lesson, I'm going to be teaching you all about how to align your drive shaft and what you might to want to be aware of if your drive shaft is not aligned properly. I'm gonna go over a ton of information in this video. Make sure you come and hang out with me, Professor Jay. I have a motor home. I don't really have to worry about this. I mean, isn't that something that is done from the factory? And I'm going to use myself as an example. I have a Jayco 24B. And one of the big things in the J-Ride that they just say is that they have a balanced and aligned drive shaft. However, getting my RV and driving it down the highway the first time I simply realized this drive shaft was not aligned properly. I'm gonna teach you what to look for and you're gonna be able to tell if your drive shaft is aligned properly. Depending on the length of your RV, you're gonna have a series of carrier bearings. Your drive shaft is aligned from the factory. However, that's not always the case. Typically, we will get a vibration from the coach or drive line between 62 and 67 miles an hour, roughly. However, the bad part about that is typically that's in that sweet speed that you want to be cruising in because of course, we don't want you speeding and breaking the law. All right, we're at the handy dandy chalkboard. I have three examples here of what you might want to look for. So this is going to be the transmission on your RV or van. This is going to be the carrier bearing. And what it is, is because of the length of the RV, they can't have one drive shaft going from the transmission all the way to the rear differential. So it has to run through a series of carrier bearings depending on the length of it. Now I'm using my example, 24B, this is a Jayco, and it has one single carrier bearing in it. Now, I did get that vibration like I mentioned in it, and it was actually because my rear end was actually so high because my RV sat so low. I know none of you guys have a problem of your RV sitting too low. It went into the carrier bearing down and then back up to the transmission. Now what that did is it put the U-joints at a crazy angle that was not equal. So when that was spinning, the faster it was spinning, the more out of balance it typically was, creating a slight vibration. Now depending on how far out of alignment yours is, it will be even worse, that vibration. So I wanna give you this example now. This and these are the, these are the leaf springs. So I guess we need to make sure that we elaborate on the leaf springs because if you have a Jayco, or any Class C, you have sad leaf springs. If you don't believe me, go take a look at your leaf springs and look how sad they are. Well, with a WeldTech Design Suspension Package, you're going to have happy leaf springs. When we add the additional lift, whether it's two, four, or six inches, it pushes this down, and now you're going to see we're gonna have the opposing side, and as happy as your leaf springs are, your drive line is not going to be at a happy angle, still causing vibration. Now, thankfully, when we do a suspension package at Weld Tech Designs, we actually shim these down. So let's take a look at this third example here. We have the happy spring and we have two carrier bearings in this. I'm using the example of like a 30 foot motorhome, 32 foot motorhome. Those are gonna have two carrier bearings. So in those, we actually have dropped this one down two inches and we've actually brought the front one down a half of an inch. In order to keep that straight line, we want a straight line as much as possible going from our transmission all the way down into our rear differential where we have our happy springs. Now, with this, everything's going to be happy. We could even make this even happier. And you know what? We even get a happy face on our drive line. Now, this is great and all on a chalkboard, but to really understand this, we're heading out into the shop. I'm gonna show you guys how to do this, what to look for, and make this even simpler on you guys at home. All right, so explaining this to you all on a chalkboard is good, but what is going to be great is actually showing you how to do this. So first, we're gonna have our Weld Tech Designs Carrier Bearing Spacer Kit. What that's going to include is a two inch piece of square tubing. 
and four quarter inch shims. It's also going to include the half inch hardware in order to bolt up these new pieces to it. Now the one other thing that you may need is a drill bit because sometimes the bolts are going to be a little undersized. We will grab that if we need it. We also are going to have our 3 8 impact and a 3 quarter inch wrench, a 3 quarter inch socket to be able to tighten these bolts up. Now I've already checked the bolts on this and they're actually going to be a 5 8 That's what tells me I'm going to probably need a drill and a drill bit to make those holes slightly bigger. The next thing is, is string. If you want to be able to get really precise, you can run a string on it. I'm going to show you how to do that. And I've also got two clamps in order to attach the string to the drive shaft. So this is a little bit of what you're going to need. Let's jump underneath this motorhome and uh, get started in aligning your drive shaft. So we picked some pretty pink string in order that you'll be able to see it really well. We're going to start off by putting this on to see how far our drive shaft is out of alignment. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the string to the center of my U-joint here, and then I'm going to run this all the way up to the other side. So as I have my string attached here, you can see that it is definitely not going in a straight line. And it's actually this transition isn't so bad. And as it gets behind this carrier bearing here, you can see it gets rather steep. Now you may be saying, well, yes, this is because it's on a lifted RV. The problem is, is on a lot of these RVs from the factory, they have the same sort of thing, just maybe not so drastic. And that's why you're getting that vibration. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to remove these bolts right here. And we're gonna be able to start lowering this down to get this to match our string line. One other tool that I forgot to mention is a jack stand. Why this is going to be important is as I remove these bolts, I don't want the whole drive shaft just to fall down. By putting the jack stand in here, it's going to catch the drive shaft and then also allows me to move it up and down. And oftentimes I'll even take the drive this and move it back here. Let's see, I'm gonna go right here. Uh, I want to go lower. Let's see. All right, there we go. So what I'll do is I'll actually place the jack stand on the drive shaft. Now, as this comes down, I'm also able to now slide this jack forward and get it into position without having to hold the drive shaft up and trying to put the bolts back in. So let's go ahead. We're going to take off these two bolts. So you can see by just loosening this up, this is already getting closer to my line. So now what I can do is I can actually move this jack stand forward and it's getting me even closer to my string line. So I'll keep moving that forward a little bit more. And you can see that I'm starting to get this lined up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to be putting that two inch spacer right here in the second carrier bearing of this drive shaft. So next I'm going to take my longer bolt. This is a half inch by three bolt that was supplied in the carrier bearing drop bracket kit. I can take that and slide this in here and get that started all the way up in there this around. Now, now that my drive shaft carrier bearing is secure, I can actually take the jack stand out completely and you can see it's going to kind of be supported there. It's not going to want to fall. I can take my second bolt Now you can see that our string line is actually a little bit closer to this. What this kind of tells me though here is this actually still might need to come down. See, I got a good start on there. I'm gonna add one more quarter inch shim to this and bring this down just a little bit more. So I'm not gonna remove the, it all the way. I'm just gonna remove it enough to get the shim in on one side. Put the nut back on it. Now I can remove this nut. I still don't think I'm happy with it. I want one more. All right, 
so now that I have added two more quarter inch shims to this, you can see that now my string line is running really nice between the center of this. And now I've actually taken the string line and extended it all the way to the tail shaft of the transmission. Now you can see my first carrier bearing here is slightly out of alignment. So I'm gonna take those two remaining quarter inch shims and I'm going to install them right here. We've lowered both of the carrier bearings down in this RV. We're going to road test it to confirm that it doesn't have any vibration. If it still does have a vibration, we may have to bring it back and put additional shims in it. Now this one quite isn't all the way down as maybe as low as I, was, I would like it. And if you've run out of shims, you could always put a washer between the bracket and that top shim in order to give it just a little bit more. I think we're gonna be really close though. Let's go drive this thing. Typically around town driving, you may not notice that your drive shaft is truly out of alignment. It's when you get on the freeway that you really start to notice that vibration. So typically on the freeway, as we're road testing this, we would get a drive shaft vibration between 62 and 65 miles an hour. It would come on and then usually go away between 67 and 70 miles an hour. So right now we're driving right there at that 65 miles an hour to see if it has any sort of vibration, noise, and it really does not. So it looks like we did a good job. Well, that's all I have in this lesson at WTDU. I hope that you guys have found this informative. You're gonna smash that subscribe button, come back because I wanna see you in more classes here as well as see all the cool things that we build here at Weld Tech Designs. So give this video a big thumbs up. I look forward to seeing you guys again in class. And if I'm asking for favors, head over to Jeremy's World 10 where I'm throwing down all kinds of fun stuff, especially with all new podcasts coming with the coolest van people out there. This is gonna be awesome. So much going on over here. I'll see you guys in the next video.